Greetings and welcome, Art Sharks. I'm here back with you with an advanced colored pencil technique video. Uh, I'm going to be going over um, a few different options for colored pencils. Um, I'm going to also talk to you about two different solvents that you can use for blending the pencils. Uh, I'm going to show you a really cool, awesome uh, little tool that you could use. I'm going to show you an electric eraser, uh, and I'm going to show you what wax bloom is, how to get rid of it, and then when you're totally finished with your drawing, what to do with it. So with me, uh, if you'll notice here, I've, I've already drawn this to save time. So I've got Prismacolor. These are the Prismacolor Premier. Scholar. This is Prismacolor Scholar. This is Crayola, and this is Polychromo. These three pencils here, with the exception of Polychromo, these are all wax-based pencils. Um, this Polychromo is oil-based. Um, as far as price, I should have done these in a better order. Crayola are your cheapest, then Scholar, then Prismacolor Premier, and then Polychromo. I will tell you that the price difference between Polychromo and even Prisma is, is pretty huge. These are very expensive pencils, but I had them sitting here, so I thought I'd include it in the video. So, um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways for blending. So option number one, you can use a, um, a colorless blender. Now you may or may not have one of these with you. If you don't have one, of course you can use a white pencil, but uh, in my previous video, I showed you how to use a colorless blender for doing that. Today, I wanna to show you how to use two different solvents. So the first one I'm going to show you is something you probably have at home, and this is just rubbing alcohol, okay? so. I put some in a little container to make things easier for myself, and I'm going to use a paintbrush. You can also use a Q-tip, that works fine too. Um, when you get this in your, in your little cup, make sure that you really kind of push your brush off to the side and let it drip that extra off, because if I get too much of the alcohol on my paper, I can really damage my paper and create some problems for myself. So. I'm going to use this on one side on each one of these so you can kind of see the how well it works. The alcohol, you can see it's kind of liquefying. What happens is it melts the wax so that your uh, pencil can, can blend out a little bit better. It works great. It's not super, super. Uh, we'll show you on the Crayola. So again, it blends it out a little bit. Okay, next is the Prismacolor Scholar. And that's how it works on the Prismacolor Scholar. You'll see that it's just taking those two colors and kind of stirring them up just a touch. Um, it also helps kind of get rid of those lines. And the last one I wanna show you is my Polychromo. It doesn't do a super great job on the Polychromo, but to be honest, if you're spending the money on Polychromo, you should probably be spending the money on the better solvent too. Um, I'd like to also show you, um, you may not be able to see it in the video, but my alcohol now has a little bit of color in it. So just be aware of that. You know, if you're mixing black and then you need to go mix, uh, you know, use it on like a light area like pink, or yellow or something, your alcohol is going to have a slight tint, and so therefore it's gonna, it could, it could spill over into the other areas. The other thing I'm gonna show you is that now my paper is rather damp. Um, if you choose this method, make sure that you let your paper dry before you start drawing on it. So if I start drawing on this wet paper, it's going to scratch the paper all up and damage it, and I might even tear all the way through. So just be, be aware of that, be very careful. The next solvent I wanna show you is something called, you'll hear me call it OMS wash, so it's odorless mineral spirits. And my preferred brand on this is this Gamblin Gamsol. Um, the smell on it is pretty minimal. Um, so I find that I can usually use it inside, even though I'm going to officially tell you that you should be using this outside or at least in an area with adequate ventilation. So open a window and have a fan blowing getting, you know, clearing the air out for you. Um, I actually prefer to store my Gamsol in these tiny little mason jars. Get that under the camera. And I'll show you. So I've got a little mason jar and I put a little sponge in there. 
and you can see there's just a little bit. And so the sponge is above the surface of the uh, OMS wash, the Gamsol. And so when I do this, when I touch my brush to the sponge, I'm not overloading it and getting too much. And so I'm not running the risk of damaging my paper. When you're not using this, you wanna make sure you cover it so that it doesn't dry out on you. So, I mean, I always just kind of keep the little lid here and I just pop it on when I'm not using it. Okay, so this is your Gamsol, the OMS wash. It's gonna do a little bit better job simply because it is um, a higher quality solvent. It's meant for this purpose. So you'll see um, it blended it a little bit better on the Prisma, on the Crayola, it's gonna blend it uh, actually a lot better. You can see, like I really uh, am able to liquefy this and make those colors start moving. I even was able to, to paint kind of outside, okay? With the Scholar, it does a pretty good job on that too. And you're gonna see the Polychromo, it's really gonna shine. So the Polychromo, it just melts that, uh, that oil base can completely down and works very, very well for that. Um, I will also tell you that the paper that I selected is just plain old drawing paper. So it's, it, it doesn't absorb as well as some of my higher quality like cotton rag papers would. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is this. Say you need to paint an area or you're trying to fill an area very lightly. Imagine this little bit of green right here is um, just a piece of scrap paper. I can take my OMS and I can wet it like a paint palette and then I can go to my artwork and I can paint with it just like it were um, watercolor. And so that's a nice way to fill a big area with a color very uh, lightly. Again, remember you wanna make sure that you're washing that very well before you um, move on to the next step. All right, so another thing I wanna show you is, so say I colored and I realize, oh my goodness, I made the biggest mistake. It looks terrible. I can actually use this, uh, this is an electric eraser and this electric eraser will m remove an area completely. Oh, my battery is almost dead, guys. And so as soon as I touch it, it's not working. But you're going to have to trust me on that, that it does actually work. Um, another technique that you can do to remove Prismacolor is to take a piece of like scotch tape. You can lay it on there and you can rub it. Or what I actually like to do, like you can draw on it. And then I can peel that up. And the area where I drew peeled up. So it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but you can see on the tape that it pulled up the, um, the Prismacolor just in that area. That's a great technique for grass, right? So grass is such a hard thing to color. You could lay the tape on, you could draw it, lay the tape on, draw your blades of grass, and then peel that up. All right, another technique for you. Here is my just mechanical pencil, okay? And I'm going to push it so that the lead is completely inside. I don't want any lead. And I'm going to use that to draw lines on my paper. I'm not actually drawing anything. I'm just making indentions on the paper. And I realize that it's very hard for you to see. I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see that better. All right, so you can see those little indentions just a bit there. There we go, that's better. Now I can take a pencil and I can lightly color over it and those lines are gonna show up. So think about like if you're wanting white cat whiskers or um, you know maybe we're doing grass again and you're trying to get the background. So you can color that. Then I can draw on top kind of inside those little lines so that I get the skinny little lines of one color with a background of a different color a lot easier than if I maybe had, um, you know, had to draw each and every one of them and then color around them. Okay, so those are some sort of more advanced Prismacolor techniques. I wanna show you two last things. So I'm gonna change papers. So you'll notice it's gonna be hard to see and I apologize, but in this, on this drawing, this area is black, but it doesn't look very black um, because Prismacolor, colors and other colored pencils are wax plus the color, the pigment. Um, 
over time, the wax has a tendency to literally float to the surface of your drawing and it creates what we call wax bloom. It's kind of like a cloud just hovering on top of your beautiful drawing. And there's a super easy solution. All you need is a cotton ball. Again, a Q-tip works too. So if you're trying to work on a smaller area, you can do that and watch how magical this is. Look at that. Oh, I was hoping for a big reveal. On my side of everything, it looks beautiful, but on the camera, it's just not conveying how beautiful it is, guys. Anyway, so in person, this is so much more magical, I guess. But anyway, so I can buff that out, and now it's showing the really beautiful um, bright black color, the vibrant black underneath. Uh, this area here is still very, very cloudy. This area is just looking really great. Okay. So you'll notice that all oh, that it gets a little bit of black on my um, cotton ball. So just make sure that you, um, when you switch to a different area with a different color, that you flip over your cotton ball, get a new cotton ball, something like that, to really, um, to buff this out nicely. And so you can just very softly in a kind of a circular motion, just rub on this, and that will get rid of that wax bloom and really bring out the vibrancy of your drawing. Please trust me that it's working. I'm so sorry that the camera is not conveying um, the huge transformation that's happening that I'm seeing. The last thing I'd like to show you is what do I do when I'm totally finished and I don't want to keep getting wax bloom on here, right? Finish your drawing 100%, buff off all the wax bloom, make sure it's looking good. Then you can go grab this. This is called Crystal, Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating. Um, this is my preferred brand. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, I find this brand works pretty well um, and is um, moderately priced where some of them are a little more expensive. Um, any clear spray paint will work. Um, and you want to do typically I'd say three coats, but you want them to be very, very, very light coats. So you're going to, you'll shake it up, take the lid off, right? And then you're going to get, you're going to hold your, the nozzle about 12 inches away from, that's not working, is it? 12 inches away from your paper and you're going to very lightly mist it. And when you do this, you're going to move in this sort of side swiping motion. So back and forth, back and forth, very, very lightly. Then you're going to let it wait. You're going to wait for about five minutes to let it dry. After it's dry, you'll come back and do a second coat and then perhaps a third coat if you think it needs that. The key to this is very light coats. You don't want to go dark on, go, go heavy on this. Um, a few more tips. You want to spray this outside. Um, put it in an area where it's not going to blow away. I've had times where it got windy and I've had to go chase drawings. Um, and make sure there's nothing, um, you know, don't put it somewhere where dirt's going to blow on it. Because while this has wet spray paint on it, if dirt or dust or something blows onto it, it's going to stick to your drawing um, and ruin all your beautiful hard work. So there are a few uh, advanced color pencil techniques for you. Pick and choose what works for you. Experiment and maybe you can come up with the next new advanced ones. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.